Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H&E Life and today I want to try something new. This will be the first video in a mini series I want to title Pathology 101 which will be basically going over some basic normal pathology followed by common diagnoses that we would make within all of these organ systems that I will talk about. The aim of this video is mostly for med students in their third and fourth year who are trying to impress on their pathology rotations and for very brand new uh, pathology residents who kind of just want to get a know of what normal looks like and what common diagnoses that they will be making uh, and will help build this foundation for them to go on to becoming better pathologists. I will start with the GI or the tubular GI tract today and that's mostly because that is my favorite subject. Okay, let's get started with the esophagus. So what you see here is a biopsy specimen. And before I get too far, within the tubular GI tract, there's going to be five main layers you want to look at. If you have a resection specimen, then you might have up to six layers. So the very first layer is your epithelium, followed by the lamina propria, followed by the musculus mucosae, followed by your submucosa, and then your musculus Propria, and the very last thing you'll have is your serosal surface. All right, the esophagus. And here, what we have is a very superficial biopsy. And when I say really superficial, all we see here is actually only the squamous epithelium. And what we have at the very base of it here, you see that there's these smaller, very dark blue staining nuclei. These are your basal layer of your epithelium and they are what is mitotically active and they divide and produce more squamous cells that push upwards. Um, and as the squamous cells matures upwards, they start to lose their nuclei. And as you can see near the surface, there is no nuclei. This looks very much like skin, but the only difference is that there is no hyperkeratotic layer on the very top because within mucosa you do not have this hyperkeratotic dead squamous layer within this epithelium you also see these structures which are kind of the papillae these are just invaginations of the lamina propria upwards into the epithelium unfortunately within the specimen it was so superficial you only see the surface epithelium you do not see the lamina propria underneath and within these papillae you'll commonly see blood vessels here's a blood vessel here's a blood vessel and blood vessel and within these blood vessels you can see um, normal constituents of blood. In the esophagus, you really should not see any inflammatory cells within the surface uh, squamous epithelium. As you can see here, this is all just uh, squamous cells and maturing squamous cells, and there's not really any inflammatory cells. And this is what normal squamous epithelium of the esophagus looks like. And when we get these biopsy specimens, they're not going to be picture perfect as you'll see in your textbook when there's really nicely aligned. And here's the basal layer and this is superficial. But then if you look at this fragment, here's your basal layer and it goes super, super superficial. Oh wait, it's more superficial than wait, why is it getting darker and now why are we back at the basal layer? It's not anything special. This is not any sort of pathology. This is basically this strip of epithelium which has been twisted onto itself. So you have base here and base here, but if you untwist it in, in your mind, this should all, this basal layer should all line up and the superficialness should all be there. And since it's completely normal, we would headline this on our pathology reports as squamous epithelium without significant abnormalities or squamous epithelium with no diagnostic abnormality. However, your home institution wants to word their normal is how you would headline this. Okay, and one thing I would like to mention, so this is superficial, you only see the squamous epithelium, that's why I titled it squamous epithelium. But if you were to get a specimen that you could see well-defined lamina propria underneath the basal layer, then you can call this squamous mucosa. But since this doesn't have the lamina propria within the specimen, this is squamous epithelium. All right, moving onwards, we'll go to the stomach. And within the stomach, there's basically two types of mucosa. There is the antral type mucosa, and then there's the body slash oxyntic type mucosa. So let's start with the antral type mucosa, which we'll see here. This is antral type mucosa, and I'll describe why it's antral type mucosa. But very first, you saw how before the surface was lined by squamous epithelium. Now it's this foveal epithelium, which is this very pink surface uh, lined cells of the stomach. 
Foveolar epithelium you should only find in the stomach. If you found this anywhere else in the body, that would be called foveolar metaplasia. So we now know we're in the stomach because we see foveolar epithelium and underneath here is lamina propria, which is this pink stuff here. And within this lamina propria, especially within the stomach, you should not see too many inflammatory cells. Most of your lamina propria of a normal looking stomach should be composed of your blood vessels within your lamina propria as well as the stromal cells within your lamina propria. And in addition to that, you may occasionally have some inflammatory cells. You may occasionally see a lymphocyte, or you may occasionally see plasma cells, maybe an eosinophil here and there. But most of the time, for a normal, healthy-looking stomach mucosa, the lamina propria and the surface epithelium and the glands underneath should all be free of major inflammatory infiltrate. Back to why this is called antromucosa. Antromucosa is basically showing that you have foveolar epithelium, lamina propria, and then you'll have also these pink mucin producing glands down here. So these will be your antral glands or antrotype glands down here. These mostly secretes mucin, and that is more of a lubrication for your stomach, whereas Oxentic or body type mucosa is where we come, where we should <laughs> see parietal cells. So parietal cells are these very pink, eosinophilic, slightly granular cells with a centrally located nuclei. And these are, are your parietal cells. And if you remember from med school, these parietal cells is what secretes your acid for your stomach. And only is oxentic mucosa contain parietal cells, with rare exception that there may be some occasional parietal cells within antromucosa, but usually that's occurring near the transition between uh, antromucosa and um, oxentic mucosa. So once again, we see this is not a perfect specimen. Uh, this is what you will see when you go out to practice, but you'll see the surface foveolar type pink foveolar epithelium, you'll have this lamina propria, which may have blood vessels, stromal cells, and occasional plasma, lymphocyte, or eosinophil. And then you'll see mostly the oxentic mucosa. Um, so these, the, the pink one is your parietal cells, and the not pink ones, the more purple cells, are your chief cells. And this is what the cells make up the glands of your body slash oxentic type mucosa. So body and oxentic mucosa are used interchangeably depending on the institution you're on. So I will just call this oxentic mucosa from now on. So oxentic mucosa, you could tell the difference from antral mucosa uh, is based on just the look. So antral mucosa, it's much thinner. You have your surface epithelium and you have a few layers of your mucin secreting cells and then you have your muscular mucosa. But if you look here at your oxentic mucosa, it's basically double the depth of your antral mucosa. So that's another way of knowing the difference between antral mucosa and oxentic mucosa is the oxentic mucosa is a little deeper. Okay, so that is a look of relatively normal looking antral mucosa and of oxentic mucosa. And that is mostly the two component type of mucosa located within the stomach. I guess I will end here. And please, 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 please comment down below if you found this helpful at all and you want me to keep making videos like this, please like and subscribe and also press that notification bell. That way you'll know when I post a new video and I will see everyone next time. Bye.